Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Efan Khan. I'm from Cambridge Quantum Computing. I'm part of the chemistry team. Um, I'm going to be presenting the first experimental realization of ADAPT VQE um, on Bugetti's uh, quantum computer. Um, so ADAPT VQE wasn't developed at CQC. It was developed at Virginia Tech, uh, but they didn't have the functionality to take it onto a machine. Uh, we did, and that's what we're presenting today. Um, so the goal of quantum chemistry is, uh, in the context of quantum computers, is to um, give a very accurate um, result for the uh, ground state of some molecule, uh, which displays a strong correlation. Um, the standard um, that we want uh, is called full configuration interaction. So if, if we have a wave function, we want to um, express it in express it in all um, in a linear combination of all electronic electronic configurations. Um, this can be quite a computationally intensive task, um, especially if you try to map that onto a quantum circuit, and that's where uh, ADAPT VQE comes in. It finds the most dominant electronic configurations to describe this correlated wave function, um, and then produces a quantum circuit. Um, a consequence of this is you end up with very um, shallow quantum circuits, um, and uh, you generally have less variational parameters. Um, so the uh, typical ansatz uh, for um, quantum, quantum chemistry simulations is UCCSD. Um, so UCCSD is basically uh, an exponentiated anti-emission uh, excitation operator. Um, so with UCCSD for small molecules, you can typically recover uh, the FCI um, state or the FCI energy. But as you move to uh, bigger systems, there's a very big gap in the energy between uh, in the um, FCI energy and the UCCSD energy. Um, you can typically try and cover that gap by moving to higher levels of excitations, so including triples and quadruple excitations. Uh, the problem with that is you end up with, with a very deep circuit uh, with lots of variational premises, and it, became, it makes the optimization, optimization step uh, very difficult. Um, so uh, one improvement that VQE has over, over UCCSD is you can, you can have triple and quadruple excitations. Um, and it will, because it only selects the most dominant ones, you don't need to take everything and map it onto a quantum, a quantum circuit. Um, so for the case of uh, H2, which is the experiment that we perform, um, with UCCSD naively, you end up with 64 CNOTs. Um, with um, ADAPT VQE, you end up with um, six CNOTs. Um, so the uh, ADAPT algorithm, um, what you do is you start with an excitation pool. Uh, this excitation pool has um, UCC operators, and we assign uh, a variationally independent parameter to each UCC excitation operator. Uh, the parameter starts off at, as a zero. Uh, this is to signify we're starting with the Hartree Fox state. We then calculate the gradient uh, with, of the Hamiltonian with respect to this um, Hartree Fox state. For a, uh, for a specific parameter, we calculate the vector. Um, we look at the uh, largest gradient. The excitation operator, which corresponds to this gradient, is then added to our ansatz. We then perform a VQE experiment, optimized energy, optimized uh, parameters. We then update the parameters for this pool and recalculate the gradient. If the gradient norm is very close to zero, adapt uh, isolation is terminated. Um, if it isn't, we continue the procedure. Um, so the problem, the problem is um, you can still produce very deep circuits. You just end up with less parameters. Uh, the reason what, so the reason that this is, is if we um, assume, for example, singles and doubles is enough to recover the FCI energy, um, mapping, sorry. Uh, yeah, so if, if we have, if singles and doubles are enough, and let's say we have, um, for, for doubles, then you end up mapping eight 
uh, Pauli exponentials uh, for, for each double to your quantum circuit. And that's, that's 2D, it's, it's no good. Um, one way to reduce this problem is to um, map uh, just one Pauli exponential at a time. Um, the problem with that is your operator pool becomes massive because for each Pauli exponential you would want um, an independent variational parameter. Um, so it would be so if you if you had um, eight excitation operators, then the operator pool would be eight times eight, uh, which is yeah, it's not, it's not good. So uh, one way to um, get past this problem is to uh, see if uh, to see which operators in your operator pool commute with the s squared operator, the spin squared operator. Um, this is a way to um, spin adapt your UCC operator pool. Um, it also reduces the size um, and defi defining each excitation as just one Pauli exponential um, doesn't increase the pool uh, size too much. Um, so um, the uh, an initial paper in that VQE was um, just a simulation on a uh, on a state vector simulator. Um, they didn't provide any quantum circuits to calculate the gradient. Uh, this is something that we had. Um, so the quantum gradient is basically um, two VQE circuits, or two state preparation circuits uh, shifted um, in the pi over two and minus pi over two direction. Um, the benefit of uh, this phase shift method compared to Ancilla-based uh, gradient methods is that um, we can make use of measurement reduction techniques, uh, as the, OT, the guy from OTI, Lumionics, uh, said. Um, so for this, for this experiment, um, we do H2 in the minimal basis to electrons for spin orbitals. Um, by commuting with the spin squared operator, um, you know you only need one double excitation. That's still eight uh, Pauli exponentials don't want to do that, so we use ADAPT, ADAPT VQE to um, find that you only need one uh, Pauli exponential. And this has been done in previous papers, but nobody's, nobody's done it with ADAPT VQE. Uh, we wanted to try and do a bigger system, but the sheer number of um, circuit evaluations needed was just too much. Um, I think that is something we're going to come back to uh, later on. Um, so uh, H2 in the minimal basis, uh, that has 14 terms in, in its Hamiltonian. Um, we're using the Bravi Katai encoding, uh, and we haven't reduced the problem to two qubits uh, because that would be pointless. Um, we only need two measurement circuits. So this is a graph on a noiseless simulator. Um, so the, the, the ADAPT VQE, uh, VQE simulation is um, just with one parameter, um, and it requires fewer energy evaluations. Uh, so two um, measurement circuits uh, for, for an energy evaluation, and six uh, measurement circuits, so, sorry, four measurement circuits for a gradient evaluation. Um, this is compared to the UCC SD VQE with three parameters, uh, where you still have only two measurement circuits for energy evaluation, but 12 measurement circuits for gradient evaluation. Um, so the, be the benefit here for the VQ optimization is you end up with less circuit evaluations, but it's, uh, you, you have to bear in mind that there is a overhead um, of measurement circuits, of measurements that you need to perform uh, to determine which is the best Pauli exponential to grow your ansatz by. This is our result on a machine. Um, hopefully, so we, we, we've only used SPAN uh, for our um, uh, calculation. Um, this is to mitigate uh, readout error. We haven't used any other noise mitigation techniques. Uh, we think if we did, we'd have better results. But it's clear to see that with ADAPT VQE, um, you get somewhat closer to the target energy compared to UCC SD VQE. Um, the gradient calculations um, were quite good. 
Um, the only thing that um, still bugs us is that for certain values, um, noise affected the calculation too much. Uh, we're still investigating why this happened, uh, but hopefully we should get past that and move on to bigger systems. Um, if anyone's interested in uh, ADAPT VQE, references one and two is where you should look. Uh, for normal v uh, VQE, reference three. For energy derivatives, four and five. Thank you.